Hi, today we are bringing Alaska, Antarctica, any other place that has glaciers home here with us. So for this particular photo, any game that has any kind of like ice theme, water theme, those would work really well. And in this game that everyone voted for on my Instagram, which I'll link right over here, everyone voted for Iwari. So that's the game I'm covering as of recent. And in Iwari, you have five different tribes. One of them is the glacier tribes. So I was thinking about how to incorporate ice and a glacier into photos for this tribe. And naturally what I've been really into lately is water tank photography. So today I'm gonna to tell you what you need. I'm gonna tell you the camera settings and I'm gonna test you a little bit on your camera settings to make sure you know exactly what you're doing and why. Cause why is always more important than giving you a bunch of numbers to follow. Let's get started. You will first need a water tank, some ice cubes that are not melted. It also works a little bit better if they're crushed. So they have a lot of different textures. Right now, these um, the ice maker that we have has these really round circular ones that are all perfect and uniform. Obviously, glaciers aren't like that, so you want to break up your ice. A lot of little ice shards work really well. Problem with that is that they melt very fast, so make sure that you, uh, you do it right before you shoot. Second thing I forgot to mention, it helps a lot if your fish tank is made out of glass. Glass will give you much less of a hard time than this plastic one I have here, and a rectangular shape also would work much better than this hexagon that I have here. So if you have a rectangular glass fish tank, prime. You also wanna make sure that you have no water drops on the sides, so make sure you wipe the inside outside and also scrape some of the bubbles off on the sides. I leave a little bit there just for some foreground texture in case the camera is able to capture that. And the last thing you need is a very strong light that's gonna go right overhead. Okay, so here I have my camera overhead, but the procedure itself is very simple. What's hard and what can be very unforgiving or your camera settings. So, so let's go ahead and take a second to understand that. If you're trying to take a photo of dropping items, what is the first thing that you need to adjust? I'll give you a second. Okay, shutter speed. So shutter speed is the very first thing you should go to. Why? Because you're trying to freeze motion, right? You want to make sure that you're capturing all those objects falling as gravity is acting upon it. The problem is when you're dropping into water, it gets tricky, right? You have a different medium, you have different densities and buoyancies of the objects that you're dropping in there. So for example, this totem right here is going to sink straight to the bottom. These little tents right here will float. Ice, especially being different textures and all, will float. So you have three different objects all mixing up together and all of them are going to bounce, float, drop in the water differently, especially when they hit each other. So because you have so many variable objects in there, it's very important to have a very fast shutter speed and to also think about what your focus is going to be. So even though you have a bunch of things that are falling together, narrow down your subject. In my case, it's going to be either the totem or the tent. I'm gonna do both and see which one I like best. But I'm gonna focus first on the totem because it's easier, because it's much bigger. You wanna make sure that you pick a very good lens for this. So in my particular case, I'm gonna go with a 100 millimeter macro lens. Reason for that is because I wanna see all the intricate little details in the water, in the ice breaking apart, in all of the little miniature details. So that's why I'm going with the 100 millimeter macro. And on top of that, I only have this tiny vertical plane to work with, right? Because if I go to the sides right here, then it won't look like you're in a pool of water. Instead, you'll know right away that it's a fish tank and we don't want it to look like it's a fish tank. We're trying to go to Alaska here, not Tim's fish tank studio. <laughs> so that's why you wanna narrow your focus and make sure that it is along here. So that's shutter speed. Now, when you crank your shutter speed all the way down, what happens to your light? It's just going to dim right away, right? All the light is now being shut apart because now the camera is going to open and close a lot faster. So that's why you need a very, very strong source of light. Um, so in a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and put this at maximum, but that's why I also put it directly overhead, right? Because now I want a even illumination of all the subjects right above. If I put it behind the tank, it's gonna blow out the lens. If I put it in front, it would be okay, but it would give kind of like that flash look, which I don't want. So to quickly summarize, we have a fast shutter speed, which means our light's gonna go low. To fix that, we're going to crank up our light source to the maximum or have as much light as possible around your fish tank. Next up, you want as many objects as you can in focus. But another problem arises because the macro lens has a very, very shallow depth of field. And in this case, that's not a good thing because we don't want too much bokeh 
or else everything's gonna be blurry. We want as clear and as crisp as a photo as possible. So we're going to crank up the f-stop and this one goes down to f2.8. I'm gonna crank it up as much as possible, maybe we're on f6, f7, f8. And then when you do that, again, what happens to your camera? It's gonna get darker yet again, right? Because now you're letting in less and less light, which leads us to our final way of adjusting the camera and that is ISO. So ISO, you need to know your camera's limitations for ISO. For this one I'm using, the 1DX, I can go up to like 2500, which I'm gonna to go to, and that's probably the maximum because after that, it's going to introduce a lot of green. A lot of other cameras probably fluctuate around 400 to 800 ISO before you start seeing all that nasty grain that you don't want. So fast shutter speed to capture everything in motion, high f-stop to get everything in focus, ISO to compensate because everything's gonna be super dark, and then strong light source. And the very final thing you want to adjust is to make sure that you are on manual focus. If you're on autofocus, it's just going to scan across multiple items all the way across, you don't want that. So what I'm going to do is to kind of make a mental mental line and I'm gonna drop all the pieces along this midline here. So I'll show you, but I'm gonna set the focus right here in the water and then I'm gonna turn off autofocus and try to drop it as closely as I can to where I just set it. Okay, let's begin. So what you can also do is pull up a picture from your tablet or your laptop or even print on a photo. I'm gonna use this glacier looking one that I took over in Banff and then I'm gonna put it right behind my fish tank right here. Okay, so here's my subject, right? And then this is where I want to set focus. This is the middle of the fish tank right here, right along this midline. So I wanna drop it right in the center. But the thing is, when you put it in the water, it diffracts, right? So because it diffracts, it's going to have a different focus point underneath the water. So I'm actually going to put focus on the water instead. So you don't actually wanna set focus above the water because your picture is going to be underwater, which is why you now need to shift focus for your camera to go underwater instead. Just like that, okay? So with all of our settings dialed in, the only thing left to do is to drop the components and then set it on burst mode, take a bunch of pictures and hope for the best. So that was some pseudo glacier landscape photography that you can do at home for any game that has an ice theme for it or for any product actually that works well with ice. And with that, I hope you found this photography tips and tricks video helpful as always. Let me know if you have any questions about it down in the comments below because here we grow together.